So in today's video, we're going to delve deeper into concentration and we're going to look at how our values influence our children's level of concentration. Now, I know when we hear the word values, you don't commonly associate it with concentration, do you? It's not the normal connotation. However, when we consider what we've learned in the previous modules, it actually makes sense. We learn how the brain releases neurotransmitters, specifically oxytocin and serotonin, which engages us emotionally so that, that we can focus solely on a task. And then in the previous module, we looked at how the learning styles and the physical environment shape and impact the level of concentration on our children. So with that in mind, does it seem so removed that our values also plays a key role in determining the concentration of our children? So to consider that, we need to first define what values are. So in today's video, we're going to learn about what values are, how they impact our children's concentration, and then how we can use our knowledge of values to nurture and develop our children's level of concentration. So what are values? We all have a rough idea. We all say that we have values and we may use them to guide us in our day-to-day -day life. But what does it actually mean? So to define this word, it's great to look at the etymology of the word, which means where did it originate from? And this word actually originates in Latin, valer, meaning be strong. And this evolved into Old French, um, valor, meaning be worthy. So when we consider those two ideas, we have be strong and be worthy, then it makes a lot of sense what values actually means. It means something that we take and believe strongly in and something that we deem worthwhile and worthy. And actually, that makes sense as a driving force for our emotions, doesn't it? Because our emotions are determined by things that we feel strongly about and something that we seem you know, worthwhile. So how does that play out then with our children and their concentration? Well, consider this. Have you ever had the experience of trying to engage your child into completing their homework or to doing um, a studying task? And it's led to an absolute eruption of arguing to the point where your child is left crying, you're feeling wrathful anger and a lot of guilt. And the homework or the task is left incomplete. What happened? So often we lose sight of our children and focus on the homework or focus on the studying task or whatever it is. And actually, is that where our values lie? Well, no. We deem our children valuable. And the value of the homework or the studying, it does have some inherent you know, value to it, of course but it's actually what it will do for our children, which is why it's important. But so often we lose sight of the child and focus on the task, and we should focus on the child. So with that in mind, how does that then allow us to engage with our children and nurture their concentration? Well, if we can see what's valuable to them, we can then enhance and expand their concentration level. So for example, I'm a private tutor and I've been working with a six-year-old child who is autistic. And we started to have a few one-to-one -one sessions. And then with COVID-19 and the lockdown, we had to then move on to online lessons. And I was concerned that it might not translate so well. Children of autism tend to have communication issues and it can be difficult for them to engage anyway with somebody there being present. And I wasn't sure how it was going to work. So I had to th consider what was important to him, what were his values. So he loves maths. He's really good at it. It's something that is natural to him. English, on the other hand, is something that he isn't so fond of. And getting him to write was a real chore. He would resist it greatly. So knowing that, what I did was break down the session. So we were having one hourly sessions and we decided to break that down to 30 minute chunks so that it wasn't too much for him. We would start off with a math task, something that he enjoyed and deemed valuable. We would then have a short segue into something relating to English. 
maybe five minutes, and then back onto math so that he ended on a positive, something that he deemed valuable to try and create a positive experience. And at first, he was completely bewildered by the online experience. He was fascinated by the camera, by the keys, by absolutely everything. And so he was quite distracted. But by engaging him with something he enjoyed and seemed and deemed valuable, he started to sit and pay attention. He likes game play and competition. So I used paint to create um, like a tally with his name above one side and my name above the other. And then we made it into a competition whereby we would see who could find the information from the text the quickest. And then we would use the emojis to reward him. And he absolutely fell in love with it to the point where he actually asks, can we do vocabulary? Can we do English? So he really loves it. And it was because we were engaging with his values. And it worked wonderfully well. Another student of mine loves cooking, but she hates maths and she's convinced herself that she's not very good at it. So rather than trying to say, well, this is important, it's quite abstract. It means nothing to her. So again, we tapped into what was valuable to her and started to use the measurements, the cost of things and integrated maths in that way. And now she's quick at mental arithmetic. So values are really important and can help to stretch and expand the level of concentration of your children. I read an article not so long ago relating to a young man who died at the age of 25. He had a severe disability that started to manifest when the child was four. Up until that point, he'd been quite healthy. And it was an illness that affected his bones and his muscles so that slowly over time, these began to degenerate. And so it was painful for him to run around. So at school, when he was about 10, he couldn't go outside, he had to stay inside. And so there was very limited things that he could do. And he started to go online more. He started to play online games. And one game that he particularly liked was WoW, which is World of Warcraft. And so because gamers tend to play these games after work or after school, it meant that for him, his social life was predominantly in the evening when people were going to bed to sleep. And as he grew up, he spent more and more of his time in this online world. But for his parents, they couldn't see the value in it. And they wrote it off as being something that was a waste of his time. And they were hoping that he would sleep normal hours and engage in normal activities. And actually, after he's died, his parents were touched and moved by the sheer number of people who knew their son. All across Europe, people lit candles in memory of their son. And they had all these condolences and people, his friends, speaking out at his funeral. And all his parents could see was their son lonely, playing games, and that's it. But actually, he had created this, through this, this means of online world, a character and he had established himself. He connected with so many people and inspired so many people as well. And his father said, I wished I had knew the value in it for him because it would have allowed me to connect greatly with my son. And perhaps if I had done that, then I would have been able to facilitate him to have done more in the world too. So it's really important that we look at what is valuable to our children and try and engage with that. So for a lot of teens and young people, they do value highly games, video games. And so rather than just writing off as a waste of time, why not pick up the control and get involved? A lot of these games now have a lot of logic, story, and it's a great way for children to communicate with their friends. And some of the vocabulary in there is quite advanced. By doing that, you're showing your child that you're interested in what's important to them. And then you can use that to spend time with them, to have that connection, and then to segue into other activities. So overall, then, we know that values are things that we deem strongly worthwhile. And if we can engage in our children's values, we can then expand their level of concentration. 
because it's the same with us. If we value something, we're going to invest our time in it, right? 